Hey guys, Swifty here breaking down everything Chicago Bears. Today's video is the full scouting report for Illinois center Doug Kramer. This is one of the videos that takes a ton of work, so please hit that like button for me guys. It really helps get this video out there for other Bear fans to see. In case you missed it, I'm doing full breakdowns on every single rookie that Ryan Poles drafted this year. I have already dropped videos on our first four picks from the NFL Draft. This is my fifth video of this type. I broke down Jaquan Brisker first, followed by Valus Jones Jr., Tyler Gordon, and then Braxton Jones last weekend. Today marks draft pick breakdown video number five on Doug Kramer, meaning I'm halfway through the rookie class. I still have five to go after this one. I will try to release at least one every weekend. Up next, we have Zachary Thomas, Jatiree Carter, Dominique Robinson, Treston Ebner, and Elijah Hicks, my guy. I will do a video on punter Trenton Gill as well. He was the seventh round pick who should probably be our starting punter. It will not be as in-depth as these other videos because quite simply, he is a punter. I'll be dead serious here. I haven't done an in-depth breakdown on a punter in my entire life, but I am going to see what he has to offer and give you guys my take on the kit. With all that being said, it's time to get into my Doug Kramer breakdown. Let's go. Before we get into his strengths and weaknesses, let's go over his measurables and some interesting notes. This is center Doug Kramer from the University of Illinois. He's 6 foot 2, 305 pounds, 23 years old, ran a 497 40 yard dash, has 31 and a half inch arms, and is from Hinesdale, Illinois. His 14 big time blocks were the most ever recorded by PFF for a Power 5 center. He was all Big Ten second team. He grew up a Bears fan, a local product, grew up in Chicago, and attended Hinesdale Central High School. PFF had him rated as the seventh best interior lineman in the entire draft. Now let's get to his strengths. He has a very strong anchor and a solid base with a low center of gravity. He plays with a nasty demeanor and has a mean streak. He's athletic on the move and can destroy linebackers on the second level. He always blocks to the whistle and is a hard worker who never gives up on a play. He has a solid and sturdy frame. He usually plays with low pad level and has great anchor strength and grip strength in his hands is very quick with solid footwork. Kramer has a lower center of gravity, but plays with a bit of nastiness and has sort of a powerful violence to his game that I just love. He has a solid IQ and started at center his entire career at Illinois, five years. He has a ton of experience calling plays for the O-line and he has over 2,300 career snaps at center. One of the things I like most about Kramer is his technique. He generally plays with good hand placement and has solid technique overall. He would be a good run blocker day one in the NFL with his low center of gravity, ability to use leverage and wall off defenders while getting to his spot. Now let's get to his weaknesses. He has issues with balance, almost like he's trying too hard at times. He overextends and can end up on the ground a lot. I've seen him diving at linebackers on the second level and sometimes even looking silly. He plays well on the move and uses good footwork, but lunges too often and plays with his upper body ahead of his feet at times. When he gets his hands on someone, he usually makes the block. It's when he lunges or whiffs on a block and ends up on the ground that needs to be coached out of him. He's also susceptible to speed rushers on the inside. He's a bit undersized and lacks elite strength. His technique allows him to hold ground versus more powerful defenders. However, he is a bit undersized and needs to bulk up at the next level. Now I want to talk a bit about Kramer's long-term potential. I think there is definitely a chance that we found our center of the future 
and he could be a guy who sticks around long term. I see shades of Olin Krutz in this kid. He's a tough, smart center who can come in and you wouldn't notice much of a drop off if your starter went down. He could be that guy for two years behind Lucas Patrick. Then by year three, he would take over the starting job if he hasn't seized it by then already. I think there is a, I think there's definitely a good chance he ends up starting for us at some point, and I will definitely be rooting for him to not only win a starting job, but to stick around long term. He's a local kid, and you have to root for him. And if things shake out right, he could definitely be a Chicago Bear long term. What are my expectations for the 2022 season? Kramer will be behind Lucas Patrick on the depth chart. I expect him to immediately surpass Sam Mustafer and put Sam's spot on the roster in danger. Kramer is easily a better player than Mustafer in my opinion, and if he was here last year, he would have been our starter. That shows how bad our line was last year. Now instead of having to come in and be a rookie starter, Kramer can learn behind Lucas Patrick for a year or two while providing solid depth on the interior of the line. I think he improves our depth immediately. I think if asked to play early, he will do well and not be a liability like a lot of Bears backups in the past. But now let's get into Doug Kramer's grades. First up, let's talk about his measurables. Kramer is a bit undersized, but he has a powerful and compact frame with a low center of gravity. I give him a 7.9 on his measurables. Next up is his athleticism. He scored an 8.48 on the RAS score. He has good athleticism, but needs to work on staying on his feet. I give him an 8.1 on athleticism. Run blocking. Kramer is a really good run blocker and projects to be solid in this area from day one. He is a technically sound, strong, and violent run blocker who will stick around in the NFL because of this even if he never develops into a great pass blocker. I give him an 8.5 in run blocking. Pass blocking. He can be laid off the snap and misses on initial punches too often. He will lunge and lose balance when beat and needs to work on recovering. He has the toughness, hand strength, and athleticism to be a good pass blocker, but will need some work in this area. I give him a 6.9 in pass blocking. Technique. Kramer is a smart, technically sound football player. He doesn't have the best technique ever, but he uses solid technique and can get even better. I give him an 8.0. In t- Overall, Kramer is a very good run blocker who looks like a future starting center in the NFL. He is a solid player and should be able to stick around if he can take well to coaching and NFL weight rooms. My final score for Doug Kramer is 7.7 out of 10. Honestly, you don't find guys this good in the sixth round that often and goes to show once again how deep this draft class was. I love the pick overall. But now for my final thoughts. And now that I'm done with my reports on Doug Kramer and Braxton Jones, I am already hard at work on both Zachary Thomas and Jatiree Carter as well. I just have to talk for a minute about how much talent we added in one draft class. I looked at all of our day three offensive line picks since 2015. In 2015, we took Teo Fabaluji, Jordan Morgan in 2017, and then Arlington Hambright and Lechavius Simmons in 2020. None of these guys were that talented. Out of the group, I only thought one could potentially someday develop into a starter, and that was Morgan. Morgan has stuck around in the NFL and he somehow starts one preseason game a year every season. He's never been able to climb a roster or earn a starting spot, though. But look at the guys we brought in this year. Braxton Jones, Doug Kramer, Zachary Thomas, and Jatiree Carter. All four have the potential to stick around long term. All four could develop into a starter. None of the four might end up as day one starters, but it doesn't change the fact that all four have starting potential. Even if you are a pessimist and want to say Poles didn't land a single surefire starter on the O-line, okay, sure, I wouldn't argue it. My counterpoint is he added four guys who could improve the depth at every spot on our line. Tackle, guard, and center. 
We also added four guys who could be long-term starting options in the future. From everything I gathered so far, it seems like Poles really hit a home run with this draft class. We will see how the guys turn out, but I couldn't be more excited for our future with Ryan Poles running the draft. After I finish up my scouting reports, I will do an overall grade on this draft class. As many of you noticed, I have been bringing in my man, Jordan Silvera, for every one of these scouting report videos. These take so much work that I like to give you guys bonus content on top of the scouting report as well. Jordan is a member of the Barroom Network and always great to talk to. These are the videos that take a ton of work, so please remember to hit that like button for me and share this video with your Bear fan friends. Before I get to the interview with Jordan, I want to take a moment and thank all the fans out there. You guys continue to amaze me in the comments section, and I am blown away by your knowledge. Couldn't be happier to be providing this content for the best Bear fans in the world. Nothing but love, guys. So let's get to my interview with Jordan. As always, stick around till the end as I like to provide some bonuses at the end of videos. What up, guys? Swifty back here again with your boy Jordan T. Silvera. You can find him on Twitter. Always coming on the show with me as well. Love talking football with this guy. It's always a pleasure. Today we're talking a little bit about the Illinois Center, the local kid, Doug Kramer. I almost always want to say Eric Kramer, so if I do call him that once or twice during the video, which don't don't hate me for that. Anyway, uh, Jordan, go ahead and give me some of your initial thoughts, uh, strengths and weaknesses of Doug Kramer's game. Yeah, I think Doug Kramer to me is a guy that I, I don't want to conflate it. I'm not telling anybody that he has the same skill level of Cam Jurgens or Tyler Linderbaum. But it was very evident when watching his film at his five years at Illinois that he is the exact mold of what you're looking for out of that zone center. A guy that's not particularly an ass kicker. It's not like his play strength is outrageous or anything of that nature. But his ability to stay low, maintain leverage, and get to the spot. Again, this is the whole idea of the zone scheme is leverage. Getting to your spot and winning the leverage battle. Football is a game of leverage. And if you can get to your spot before the other man and your technique and leverage is good, theoretically, you're doing your job to wall off or mirror with the defensive lineman, and that's what Kramer did. And the thing about Kramer is, I mean, we can go into the deeper aspects of what he provides to this offense and some of the things of his skill set, but to me it was the lateral quickness, his leverage, getting off the ball, and then getting to the spot. It was really effective in the run game of getting to the spot and turning defenders for that, for running backs to cut it off of his backside. And so I could immediately, when watching him, I could see, I get it. I, I mean, I had certain guys, like I liked Alec Lindstrom, for example, or Michael Maietti, Brock Hoffman, but you could immediately see with Kramer that, oh, this is that zone scheme. This is that guy that is really good at getting off the ball, reaching a three-tech, getting the turn, setting the point at the pivot, and that is what he looks like And when you watch his film. Yeah, love it, man. I love it. And then, uh, he's a guy, I think, just love his uh, – he's got that, like, compact, yep. short – a strong, stout frame that uh, you just kind of love to see in a center, kind of like the Olin Krutz type style. Some of those stocky other centers you've seen them before in the league, and uh, I love that about him. It is his play strength, his grip, and he has that athleticism. He's a guy I love, and I think one of the things when you talk about being a center in the NFL and why I think they prefer Lucas Patrick, because those are the guys that call the plays on the offensive line oftentimes end up being the quarterback's best friend. So when it comes to Doug Kramer, how confident are you in Doug Kramer's ability to come in and call those plays on the line? Yeah, you know, that's something that I think is really underrated about Doug Kramer. He's a guy that spent five years at the college level. And I'm, again, I'm not saying he's like some five-year player at Alabama or the SEC, but the thing to remember, and this is this is no shot on Justin Fields, but you could very clearly see early on last year when uh, Smith from the Buffalo Bills took his helmet off because he didn't catch the protection call. He learned it as the year went on, but it clearly wasn't his strong suit. And the thing with a young quarterback is, sure, we'd all love everybody to be Tom Brady where they're able to dissect the defense, check, make the calls, the check, set the audibles, get it, you know, get people to jump off sides. But as a young quarterback, Justin Fields' head with this new scheme is going to be spinning on where am I going with the ball, what defense am I seeing? If you can take something off of his plate and say, we're going to have the center call all the protections for you, 
that helps. You've seen this continuously done throughout the league. The one that just sticks out to my head right now is you had Justin Herbert as a rookie. The first thing that that thing that stood out to me immediately is that when Justin Herbert came into the league as a rookie under Anthony Lynn, he had had a, whatever center they had. I'm forgetting who, who the Chargers had. But the first thing that Brandon Staley did as their big free agent signing, their marquee guy, was to go get uh, the center from Green Bay and plug him in as the veteran guy for Herbert to sit there and say, okay, we're going to take that off your plate. And you're seeing that now in some respect with Ryan Poles going to Lucas Patrick to be that veteran guy that can make the calls and protections. And with Lucas Patrick, I know this is about Kramer, but Lucas Patrick was the guy at the pivot at center for Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers felt comfortable with the idea that, hey, make the protection calls, but I'll cover your back if you need it. The thing with Doug Kramer that's totally underrated is as a five-year guy at Illinois, he's got enough experience making the protection calls that if for some reason Lucas Patrick were to go down, God forbid, or maybe there's, I don't know, for whatever reason, Lucas Patrick doesn't perform up to standards, I'm going to be kind of taking a wild take here. I don't think it would be too wild to assume that Doug Kramer could come in and be a guy that could make the protection calls correctly. I mean, this is the big thing about Sam Mustafer. I know people like to rag on Mustafer, but the thing about him is he's smart. He was able to set the protection calls. Now, his skill set's a whole different thing, but in that respect with Doug Kramer, I think he can call the protections being that guy that has a ton of college experience and help Justin Fields that way. If he had to step into the center of spot duty. I love that, man. I love that. And I, I love hearing that too. And I, I kind of had the same assessment there. I think he is a guy who can come in. He's smart. I think obviously needs a little bit of work before he's quite ready in the NFL. And that's why I think it's actually kind of a perfect situation for him to come in and learn a little bit behind Lucas Patrick. But yeah, Lucas Patrick comes that goes down or something unforeseen happens like that. You have a kid who can come in and make those calls and potentially be a good center from day one instead of having to rely on a guy like Sam Mustafer. And that's, you, you can't, uh, you can't underestimate that. That's a huge move there. Go ahead and, um, any final thoughts you have on Doug Kramer or how he fits as a team or his role going forward? Anything you want to touch on there? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm higher on Doug Kramer than probably most fans. And I wasn't, let me be very clear, I, I like to scout myself and say I wasn't incredibly high on the pick when it originally happened because I had other guys I liked. But I can concede that I see the, probably the, the polls idea behind why they'd want him in this offense. I think, like I said, in year one, if he got some duty there for whatever reason, it wouldn't surprise me. And I think he'd actually probably acquit himself pretty well. My, if I have to be cr critical about one particular area of Kramer's game, it's that, because of that lack of play strength, I think he sometimes gets overpowered and will kind of – the thing you want to see from offensive linemen is them hip-tossing defensive linemen. You'll almost see defensive linemen just get annoyed like, hey, Kramer, you're kind of a gnat at the barbecue. Get off me. And he tends to fall to the ground a lot, and that's really not what you want to see as a guy, an offensive lineman that's repeatedly on the ground. But that is a game of, hey, let's get the leverage tuned up. Let's get your footwork right your grip strength to where you are not just getting out of, because this is what happens when you're getting out of form in those blocks and your feet, you're not anchoring well, your feet are too narrow, your base is too narrow. You don't have that grip strength. Your, your hands are in an awful placement where you don't have the leverage and you're not winning that game. You tend to play yourself out of the position where all of a sudden one topsy-turvy move and you're falling down. And that's all technical stuff that if Chris Morgan is the guy that we all hope he is, and he's really that all-star offensive line coach, then theoretically, the technique with all these guys, Braxton Jones, Zachary Thomas, Tyre Carter, Doug Kramer, all that stuff should be able to be fixed. I love that, man, and that's what gets me really excited about this offensive line is so far, I'm, I'm still haven't broke down Zachary Thomas or Jatire Carter in depth yet, but I have watched a little bit of tape on him, and I'm actually really excited about both of those guys, maybe more so than Kramer and Braxton Jones even, as I think they both have a chance to start this year. Man, as always, Jordan, man, I love having you on. Jordan T. Silvera on Twitter. I'll go ahead and say bye to the fans, man. Yeah, thanks again, everybody. Bear down. I appreciate you tuning in, and uh, if you find any of my takes interesting, you can find me, as, as Swifty said, Jordan T. Silvera on Twitter, or I'm also on the Barroom Network, a fellow uh, network that produces Chicago Bears content. I'm there on Sunday mornings of the Barfly Tailgate Show. Thanks, Swifty. Bear Shout down, out to man. Aldo, man. Love it over there. Uh, bear down. Yo, I appreciate everyone that's watched. I have a couple outtakes coming at the end, the funny stuff. You guys know what I do. Please, if you haven't hit that like button yet, please, please, please hit it now. And until next time, guys, 
bear down. And, um... <laughs> Cut. Um. Um. Ah. But, um. Um. No. What do you feel? Or how do you feel? Wait. Uh, Brandon Taylor does. I'm saying Brandon Taylor. You can probably cut this out. That's not his name. Uh, um. Dean. No. Um. Brandon. <laughs> isn't it Dean? Oh. No, Brandon Bean's Buffalo's GM. Yeah, wait, no. Um, Brandon Staley. Brandon Staley. Brandon Staley, okay. yeah, I don't know. Just, yeah, just pick it Brandon back Joseph. up. Brandon Joseph well, said Northwestern safety. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Brent, Brandon Joseph is the Northwestern safety, Jesus Christ, who's now at the uh, better day. Brandon Staley, okay. Yeah, Brandon Staley. Um, um, but, um, um. And, you know, the thing that stuck out to me immediately was that when Justin Field or just, oh, you're gonna have to cut this, geez, now I'm getting tired. And then, um, 